Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me okay? Sometimes I get away from the mic, so please feel free to motion for me to get closer. Um, my name is Susan Morrison. I'm the Pines Operations Analyst with the Georgia Public Library Service. Um, and one project I started with the team a little over a year ago now, full time. Um, and one of the projects I took on was a big permissions review overhaul. Um, so we'll be talking about permissions today. Um, and I promise this is the only other big Lebowski reference that I have in here other than the title. So I don't know how you feel about that. Um, but I thought this explained the process of reviewing, testing, defining permissions um, kind of perfectly. Um, it's complicated. Um, there's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have you's, um, and a lot of just different steps involved, um, obviously, because it affects everything we do in Evergreen. Um, so a simple agenda. Um, I was just going to give an overview of the Pines Permissions Project, um, you know, what I've done so far, what we've done as a team so far, um, and then I would love an open discussion. Um, I would really like to, you know, hear from you all on, you know, suggestions, projects you've worked on, how you've kind of approached this. Um, so, and feel free to ask questions at any time or, um, yeah, speak up at any time. Um, and then a disclaimer, I am a newer Evergreen user. I don't know how many years I can say new. <laughs> I'm going to just say new. Um, so I don't know code. Um, I have a pretty limited vocabulary. I will probably say thing and stuff a lot when I'm trying to describe <laughs> things. Um, and a note is that giving a you know, new Evergreen user and employee a permissions review project is an amazing training tool. And I say that with no sarcasm. I mean that sincerely. Um, it really, you know, kind of pushes you to, you know, delve into everything, um, all the interfaces, all the different, um, you know, penalties, again, code, even though I don't really understand it, but um, it really does make you look at everything. So it's really helpful to get that kind of holistic understanding. Um, so the goals of the project, um, and it did start, I want to say roughly May of last year, um, were to find out exactly what permissions are needed uh, for each staff member to do their job. Um, and then to provide clear descriptions and explanations of what each permission does, and then what each permission group has the ability to do. Um, and then, of course, gain a deeper understanding of how permissions work, which, of course, that is a work in progress. Um, so the plan was um, send out an initial survey to libraries. So we really wanted to get a sense of what they were doing, you know, currently. Um, so how they were assigning permission groups, how they were assigning um, you know, staff, various permissions, if, it were, if there were a lot of one-off assignments, um, and then to review the permission groups, uh, consider if anything should be eliminated, if anything should be added, and of course, if there's any, you know, changes that needed to be made within those groups. Um, then review, test, and document permission functionality, um, again, with that goal to determine what each permission does, ensure it's accurately described, and then determine, um, you know, if any permission should be added, removed, um, deprecated. Um, and then reach out to the PINE subcommittees. So uh, we have subcommittees of library staff um, who specialize in certain areas. Um, so reach out to them for further evaluation, again, to get to the bottom of what exactly do staff need. Um, and then shadow libraries for testing to, again, just um, get a deeper understanding, see, you know, kind of observe all the different workflows and see, um, you know, how that can help our decision making. Um, so this is where I think I am now and maybe in perpetuity, um, but yeah, definitely in, um, and we'll, you know, we'll probably go back to the surveying and reviewing the groups at one point or at some points um, over and over again. Um, but yeah, definitely in the review and testing phase. Um, I've been in that since again, last May about. Um, so this is just to give an idea of the PINES uh, permission group structure. Um, so all the uh, groups or the levels in blue, that represents um, you receive inherited perms. Um, so if user down to staff, and then we have three um, staff uh, groups of administrator, catalogers, circulator. So those all have inherited uh, permissions within those groups. And then um, there's additional permissions added to um, all the groups in green. Um, and then I did include the uh, CAT3 and CERC4. So those we have um, 
deprecated since uh, this project started. Um, we found that there weren't a lot of differences and there weren't a lot of, or not a lot of libraries were using them. Um, so I just grayed those out, but we did have those. Um, and I'll speak about this more in detail, but um, the CAT coordinator um, group was new. And then we also have the acquisitions. Um, so those are the levels of acquisitions we have. And then the bottom two, um, I believe, and I don't think Tiffany's in here, um, but they're no longer in use. But again, just to give an idea, we did have, you know, we do have a, a hierarchy of permission groups. Um, this was the survey um, that I sent out. So I sent it out to our, um, just our staff listserv. Um, and again, I won't read each of the questions, but just wanting to know what is your rationale um, when you assign a staff member per permission group? Um, do you ever move them up or down? If so, why? Um, do you like or does the current um, hierarchy or levels uh, make sense to you? Um, getting an idea of staff. So do they work between, between branches? Um, does each branch have a library manager? And so again, just getting that understanding of, um, you know, how they're, how they think about permissions. Um, so we we do have 51 library systems in the consortium, um, 40 of them responded, so that was helpful. Um, permission groups, is, um, and the main results were that permission group assignments are based on job over skill level. Um, and then the majority approved of the hierarchical, hierarchical permission group structure. Um, there were a lot of comments to make it simplified. Um, and then because a lot of um, staff do work across multiple branches. Um, not many of them uh, or the libraries add one-off permissions. I think probably the most common one is um, reports. So adding, you know, report permissions um, to staff that don't already have it. Um, and then it was uncommon to want to remove um, one-off permissions because of course, you know, right now we can't do that. Um, and this is probably hard to see, but it is in the slide, but that's just, again, the breakdown of the responses. Um, so I, I know these slides will be available um, but again, just repeating what I said, um, definitely based on the, the job they have instead of necessarily the skill. Um, and additional comments, um, yeah, a lot of comments about simplifying permissions and that they're too hard to understand. Um, so going back to that goal of making sure it's clear what each permission does, and sometimes it is obvious and sometimes, of course, it isn't. Um, but um, and then kind of having a higher level view of the groups themselves. So what is the difference between, um, you know, let's say the first level of circulation staff and the second? Um, you know, what are the main differences between those two groups? Oh, and then another thing, um, since we have, you know, small, medium and large um, library systems, a lot of the smaller systems, they don't need you know, all these different levels. Um, they usually just use the top level of each of the, you know, circulation or cataloging because um, they really don't have, you know, enough staff to, um, they don't see the need for the lower levels for that. Um, so then started my spreadsheeting. This is one of, I don't know how many tabs and spreadsheets I've created throughout. I've kind of made a different one each time. Um, this makes complete sense to me, but I'm sure it just looks like a jumble of things. Um, but I got really into color coding and check boxes. Um, but yeah, so this is just um, to show, um, you know, kind of how, and I have have a cleaned up version for the community. So you don't have to weed through all of this. Um, and it is kind of hard to explain the process again, because it just goes in so many different directions. Um, but I just created uh, you know, a list of all the permissions, um, separated out the permissions uh, per group. Um, I marked what permissions were assigned to each group, and that was helpful in comparing um, you know, the differences and maybe how um, you know, that helped make the decision of ridding of some of those um, groups that weren't really needed. Um, and I went through and just reviewed all the descriptions, marked, you know, what were missing descriptions. A lot of them were just the description was the name of the permission um, and what descriptions didn't make sense. And to me at the time when I first started, none of them really made sense to me. Um, and then I made just a ton of comments. So it was based on, you know, what the description was, maybe how, you know, if it should be assigned to a certain group, um, et cetera. So I think I still have like 250 comments on my first um, spreadsheet. So sometimes it times out, which I didn't know that could happen on Google Sheets. 
Um, so the testing process, so the permissions you need to test the permissions, um, and this is just in um, the permission groups, it's not actually changing the permissions um, in the list, um, but assign, update, and remove. Um, so assign, obviously, you can add a permission to a group. Um, update allows you to change the uh, depth or grantability of the permission, and then removing, of course, is deleting. Um, and I did do this on a test server, of course, um, not to mess anything up. And I don't think I actually broke any of the test servers when doing this. So that was a good um, outcome. Um, and then, yeah, various methods. Um, how I first started was at the highest admin level, and then I was just deleting one permission at a time and seeing what would happen. Um, and then on the, I started on the other end, and I'm going to call out Lindsay Stratton a lot from Westchester. Um, this is how she approached. She's done a ton of testing, so she also has a lot of information on another spreadsheet. Um, so starting with no permissions, and then except for you know logging into the staff client and again seeing what happens, adding one permission at a time, um, seeing what alerts pop up and things like that. Um, and then I just always was thinking of the crime board. Um, because you'll start somewhere and sometimes it's linear. Most of the times it's not. Um, and you, it'll just lead you in so many different directions. Um, so no matter how hard I tried to be organized, I wasn't. Um, so at this point, um, I've tested or tested, um, cause some of them, I don't think I know how to test fully, um, about 530 of the 740 permissions that we have in Pine. So we don't use all of those, but those were the ones, um, in our database. Um, and the testing all occurred with, um, on 3.8 and 3.10. Um, so there are definitely some, uh, permissions that I'll need to go back to, um, cause I think there have been some changes, um, between 3.8 and 3.10. Um, just resources I used, um, you know, anything and everything, uh, you know, Pines team documentation. Um, with the Evergreen documentation, I just linked the ones that are related to permissions. Um, so there is kind of a, an overview of how permissions can be assigned. And then there is a permissions list. Um, so it's with the, you know, name and description. Um, the wiki, um, Evergreen community, again, Lindsay, um, launch pad bugs were really um, helpful and just, again, learning about the functionality or lack thereof in certain um, functions. Uh, Field Mapper was great. Um, it has a lot of the permissions and what they're linked to. Um, and then event codes were helpful, again, just in kind of learning that language and making sure descriptions were consistent with that. Um, and then grepping the Git. Um, so again, I don't really know code, but that was helpful in seeing, um, you know, where the permissions are in the code, um, kind of what they're related to. Um, and I thought of another song related title uh, for a pr presentation. I don't think I'll ever present on Git, um, but to look it to quit is my idea if you want to take it. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of songs would come in my head as I was testing permissions because I think I was maybe going a little crazy. Um, so yeah, general findings, um, of course, yeah, it's complicated. Um, you know, some permissions only work at zero depth. So that was something new I found out because um, we actually had some that were assigned at, you know, the system or Yes, um, or are no longer in use, um, and they are still assigned um, to staff. So we can probably, you know, rid of a lot of those. Um, and then the everything permission, I really do think it does everything. <laughs> everything I spot checked with just that permission worked. Um, but again, I'm not it's all up in the air, really. Um, and I do have the link to the uh, spreadsheet that I want to, again, share with the community um, to, you know, add whatever notes you want to refer to it for your own. I hope it's helpful, at least a little bit. Um, and I'll come back and show that um, once I'm done with the slides, which is, I just have a few more. Um, so outcomes so far, so I did mention, we removed our um, kind of lowest circulation and cataloging groups. Um, and this actually provided a chance to remove a bunch of generic accounts that were really old, I think, you know, from 1999 or something like that, um, when it was first migrated. Um, so we removed a lot of um, 
outdated accounts. Um, we created our first modular group. So this is the cataloging coordinator. Um, so this is, um, they only have inherited um, staff perms at that level, plus um, several additional permissions. Um, I'm blanking, but I think it was reports, um, shelving location permissions that are updating. And then um, might've been, oh, stat cuts, thank you. Um, and what we did with that was, again, just only assigned the additional permissions. Um, so the CAT 1 is a secondary permission group, and then CAT Cord is the primary permission group. So it kind of sits on top of that. Um, so far, so good. And Elaine, you can, I, yeah, I was like, I don't think we've had any um, issues with conflicting permissions or anything like that. So this is something we're kind of thinking about. Um, is this something we could do with everything, kind of split things up between holes or reports or circulation or make it again more modular um, and based on kind of what you're actually doing um, or what kind of category you're in. Um, and then we have added or removed uh, permissions on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, of course, there's still a lot to review and discuss um, with everyone involved. Um, but just one up, or one example is that we added the update hours of operation permission um, to local administrators so they can update their own hours. Um, so before we would do that um, because we thought it was all kind of baked into the organizational unit settings, um, but we learned that it does kind of stand on its own. Um, so again, um, we're, you know, evaluating all the permissions to see if they need to be um, changed in any way. Um, and then some considerations. Um, so going through the descriptions, um, they're all kind of written in a different way. You know, a lot of them are, you know, allows user to, et cetera, um, but some are just like, you know, updates copy or does this. Um, so my uh, suggestion is to have, you know, maybe a, an approved general format of descriptions so they're all consistent. Um, and again, that's just maybe my uh, preference. Um, and then determine consistent vocabulary in descriptions. Um, so in my kind of edited descriptions, I have already changed um, copy to item. Um, there's a lot of interchange between edit or update. And again, that's probably just a really small detail, um, but just something to think about. Um, and then making a language consistent to what's in the staff client and database. And I know in the database itself, it's not always consistent. Um, but yeah, just trying to, again, make it as less confusing as possible. Um, and I, I'll bring up the testing sheet, um, but any additional columns that you think would be helpful, again, for the community to have in one place, um, we can add that. Um, and then I had mentioned the, the modular format. Um, so what's next is, of course, continued testing, um, focusing more on damp and depth and grantability. Um, I haven't tested much um, various depths on the permissions. Um, so I do want to get deeper into that, you know, after I, you know, know for sure what each one of them does. Um, again, call on the subcommittees to review the permissions. Um, bug reports. Uh, so I have been tracking, um, I think there's already one, and I think it is in relation to shelving locations. Um, there's a silent failure, or if you don't have the permission, but you edit it, it still says update, update succeeded when it doesn't actually. Um, so there are a lot of interfaces that there's that bug. Um, so that might be, you know, one kind of big um, bug report. Um, but then of course, yeah, organizing it so I can submit any others um, that are um, that need to be reported. Um, and then provide updated descriptions. There is a current bug for that. Um, so I think that's something that I, you know, hopefully um, can be done in the near future. Um, again, just having those uh, um, updated descriptions. Um, and then add permissions to Pines and Evergreen documentation where applicable. Um, we had mentioned this in a DIG meeting yesterday. Um, it is really helpful in the documentation when, you know, it lists what permissions you need to perform those functions. Um, so it would be nice to have that, you know, in, on every page um, as much as possible. And then the big piece, uh, delve into, you know, how permissions actually work. And that's the code part that, you know, I can't wrap my head around, um, but that is, you know, that is a goal of documenting how firms actually work, how, you know, how they're checked when you check the organizational unit of the staff member, things like that. Um, so that is uh, a goal. Um, so now I'll go back to 
the spreadsheet. And yeah, now please, um, questions, comments, concerns are welcome. So yeah. Um, and just to give a brief overview, um, is that really small for everyone? I was like, I don't know if that's gonna help that much. Um, but I have a column of, you know, whether I tested it, um, the date I tested, and, you know, especially uh, when I first started, I was documenting every tiny thing of, you know, what barcode, if I was, you know, touching a patron account, again, still test, but item barcodes, patron barcodes, I was documenting every little thing because I was worried about just shutting everything down. Um, but the permission name, um, description. So I have not edited all of these. I did want to get feedback on what you all would prefer or what you think would be a good format, or if we do need a consistent format. Um, the bolded ones are just edits I made. Again, I was kind of keeping track of everything. Um, I have um, testing notes, um, then a column for whether it needs a launch pad bug. Um, some of the bug links already filled in of current bugs. And then um, I was going to add the evergreen um, documentation link. Um, so again, any suggestions or any other columns you think would be helpful. Um, and then on this tab are, um, this is where, yeah, I had no permissions. Um, and I went through each interface and, you know, figured out what I could view or what I could use. And then if there was, um, you know, a perm alert of what you needed, I noted it here. Um, and again, Lindsay's um, spreadsheet has a lot of detailed information kind of in this um, with this method. Um, so yeah, questions, comments? Yes. We do. Um, there's not, um, I wish I could, yeah, I was like trying to think of off the top of my head. Um, so reports is one. Um, so we do have uh, local administrators, they have the ability to grant the reports perm to other staff. Um, a lot of the grantable ones, um, I think mostly it is just on the, you know, kind of global higher admin level, um, but we do use that. Um, and I don't know, Taryn or Elaine, if you have other examples of grantable perms. I just know permissions because that's the one we get asked the most about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is, and then, oh, and I'm sorry, I'm supposed to repeat the questions. Um, so first, um, the question was, do we use grantability in Pines? Yes, we do, um, but not, um, I don't think it's, you know, that prevalent. Um, and is there a note on what, where it's, or sorry, at what level it's grantable? Um, there are some where, so that's really up to you. That's something you can edit per permission, really. So if you make it grantable, um, when you go into the, you know, staff members, the user permission editor, you can choose at which level. Um, so that's not necessarily um, or always determined by the permission itself. Um, but for the ones I did find, I think it was the um, action triggers or the trigger, um, uh, sorry, events and definitions. I think that is one that's only used at zero or only works at zero depth. So that is noted in here, not in a very official way. <laughs> But yeah, if I came across that, I would definitely note it down. Yes. Yeah, the one that comes to mind is, um, I think it, and of course, it's some of, uh, moving the hole to the top of the queue. 
Um, so that was one that we were concerned about just again, um, in a consortium, we never want, um, you know, certain patrons to get prep, you know, we wanted to follow the order of holds, um, the very complex order of holds. <laughs> um, so that was something we did end up removing. Um, and we did get a question about that because of course, um, I think the use case was the staff member accidentally uh, canceled the hold. And so they wanted to place it again, but then moved the request date back to the original date. Um, but that actually, I believe needs the same permission as setting the hold to the top of the queue. Um, so that is something, again, it's kind of, there's always gonna be constant discussion about, yeah, um, how, how we assign those perms. Any other uh, suggestions or questions of what are you doing? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Please, yeah, I invite ev everyone in this room now has to yes. help with this project. So, And yeah, I see Lindsay um, nodding her head because that was her um, suggestion too, is a, a permissions working group, um, you know, that we continuously meet. And I would, yeah, very much love that. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the question is, um, for cataloging permissions, do you have to participate in training? Um, yes, our so our um, CAT1, um, they can do original cataloging. Um, so they do go through um, a in-depth three-day training um, with uh, Ben Lin. It's just through whoever takes the, the training. Um, so we usually, you know, once they complete the training, uh, we'll assign them those permissions or even a test account first so they can kind of, you know, practice the workflows um, and then go from there. Oh, and I'm sorry, the cataloging coordinator position, they do need the catalog or the CAT1 training and then they do an additional, um, there's just a, a certification class. I'm sorry. So yeah, for the cataloging coordinator, there is that additional certification process. Um, Taryn was saying we also have a certification class for a local admin, so they do have to pass that, um, and that is one where they do have to, they get a grade and have to pass um, to get that permission level. Yes, um, so the question was, um, do I have a list of what we ended up giving them? I can show you my messy sheet. Um, so this is, again, this is kind of my original 
one, um, but I do have columns for each of our permission groups and I have it checked. So this is, um, this has been helpful. And of course, this is where all the comments come in of, yeah, 228 comments um, about, um, you know, should we assign it to this group? Should we remove it? Um, of course, there's a lot of comments from me that says, what is this? I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, so this is a nice um, way of comparing what, again, what the differences are. If there are questions about, um, you know, and this has come up over the last year from library staff of what's the difference between a CERC 2 and a CERC 1. Um, and I can easily pull up the permissions. And again, there's not um, yet a clear explanation of what that is, but, you know, CERC, the CERC 1 staff have more override permissions or they're able to um, do more things with bills, things like that. So it is a, a nice um, kind of quick reference. Um, but yeah, the goal is to be able to summarize the differences once we figure those out, you know, if we change anything else. Um, and I'll show you, this is just the main list. So this has all of the permission groups um, listed together. Um, so you'll see in this spreadsheet, there is the depth and grantability of um, what we currently have. There have been changes. I haven't updated this one yet. Um, there have been changes, I think, um, with the depth and grantability. Um, but yeah, that gives you an example. And I'm happy to share this as well. I can add this to the main um, uh, main documentation, or sorry, main spreadsheet, if that's helpful, just to, again, see um, how they are being assigned. Um, but again, I think there, there'll probably be a good amount of changes once we're able to really um, start making decisions on that. And yeah, especially um, acquisitions and cataloging, I've tested some of the, or I've tried testing all of them, I think, at this point, but we could definitely use more testing in those areas. Yes. That, um, um, so that was what, um, so the question was, um, you know, assigning uh, based on job over skill set, and if that doesn't really work, um, that was, so the job over skill set was from the, uh, yeah, the library directors or managers who are assigning that. Um, and I think they were more saying, um, you know, I guess if they're, if it's like a newer employee um, or if they're training, they might do a lower one. Um, and then, yeah, it was kind of, it kind of seemed more like based on experience, um, which I know is skill. Um, but yeah, the way we have it again with the, you know, the groups, they are just, they do get an inherited um, group of permission. So there, I don't think there are a lot of changes. So that is something, you know, that we would, um, you know, continue to evaluate of how best to assign um, or how best to, uh, you know, create those groups or restructure those groups. And then how do we, um, again, make it as easy on the staff as possible to do their job to make sure they have everything they need. Um, I think, do we, I think we have 10 more minutes. Um, any other questions about just permissions in general, if I can answer them? Anything more systematic or Ooh, um, so the question was how to make the process of testing and reviewing permissions, um, yeah, more efficient, streamlined. Um, I don't know if I've come to that answer yet. Um, cause yeah, like I said, you know, I would have this spreadsheet, um, you know, try to go just down the list. And then, especially with holds, I feel like I would just go off in all like all these different directions, um, watching presentations about holds, or, you know, again, looking at launch bag bugs, and then that would lead me to something else. And then, so again, that's just me. So I'm sure you could figure something out more organized. Um, but yeah, in, in my experience so far, um, 
it is kind of hard. And sometimes it is hard not to follow those breadcrumbs because I'll be even doing something not, well, I guess, you know, again, everything is pretty much permissions related, but I would be not actually, you know, trying to test permissions. And then I would come across something where I was like, oh, I remember I didn't know what this was. So then I would immediately go back to my spreadsheet and then that would start something. So obviously I promise I get work done to my team here. I just get distracted by permissions. So then you can see that you can put permissions in order to really try to get the effort. And so we have time and time and time to things sort of function in one single kind of And I also try to try to make one step past that step. And then we have to remember how to do it in or to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll repeat that. Um, uh, Lindsay was saying, uh, yeah, the kind of best way to structure it, start with no permissions and try to perform the core functions of staff. So checking in, you know, items, checking out items, um, looking at staff accounts, um, you know, going through billing. Um, and what she said with uh, having the two different accounts, the change operator function will become your best friend in this because you can easily just, yeah, switch back and forth, which also took me a while to figure out. <laughs> A few more minutes, and yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so yeah, the um, what Taryn said was um, yeah, assessing you know which permissions are too broad. Um, and we brought up uh, the update barcode um, is now you know instead of having the update just the update copy perm, they can just update the barcode. Um, I know there's another um, launch pad bug out for um, just more granularity in reports permissions. Um, especially when it comes to uh, patron data. So trying to figure out are, you know, can reports be more limited um, and mostly, you know, viewing. Um, and I know there's more that I'm just not thinking of right now, but yeah, there are definitely some ideas out there about how to make them more granular. We do have them, um, and I actually did not include that in my review, um, so I really just focused on staff um, at the time, but yeah, that's a good, um, that would need to be something, and because we also do, yeah, like cat vendor um, accounts, um, so they do have, of course, minimal permissions, um, but no, I think um, that would definitely be good to assess. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I could be wrong, but I think they have maybe like four permissions or something like that. Yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I so some, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, there was, um, there's a general act permission. Um, and that we recently found out is just tied to, um, I think, currency or something. Um, so it really has nothing to do, like, I think it's in the act code, but just so minimally that it really doesn't. So that was another kind of um, no permission uh, process I went through was just having general act and I couldn't do anything in act. Um, so, and again, my ACK knowledge is limited. It's a little more after this, um, but yeah, there's a lot of, um, you know, and again, a lot of uh, nuances in this. So even with um, testing like organizational unit settings, um, the, I think with the addresses, it's, um, you know, I think it's delete org address doesn't, or it only works on the first tab, or it only works if something else is assigned. And this is in here much more, hopefully, articulately than I'm saying now. But yeah, there are just so many little things um, that you'll find. Um, and yeah, so many different ways they kind of affect each other or don't. Um, and again, the link to this is in the... Um, PowerPoint. Um, and then, yeah, I love the idea of a working group. Um, Lindsay, should I, you, that was your idea. So <laughs> I originally, um, but yeah, no, that would be great because, you know, like he's like having more of, you know, people who do understand code or again, have had a lot more experience in Evergreen um, and just working through all these processes. It would be great to just have, you know, as many, you know, people kind of contributing to this um, as possible. So, and that would definitely help me out. <laughs> I made um, one commit to documentation, my first one, and I added the permissions. And of course I was like, this doesn't really work how you expect. So you kind of need this and then this and this. And I was like, okay, hopefully that makes sense. But um, yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess I think we're out of time, but please feel free. Um, I'll put up my contact information. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and yeah, we can go from there. Thank you all. <laughs>